Hey everyone here from Tunnel Vision TV and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to use Maya to create a 2D animation or a cartoon. So first of all I'm going to jump into Photoshop and um, this is the guy that we're going to use for this tutorial. I can't really draw, or I can't draw at all so I just downloaded this from Google but obviously you can draw your own uh, character and basically what you need is all the different body parts like the head, the body, the arms and the legs and um, I'm going to quickly show you just how to prepare this for Maya. So um, first of all we need to cut out all the pieces and save them as separate files. So I'm going to take my selection tool and I'm just going to draw a box around the head like that and then I'm going to crop it. So I'm going to go to image and crop um, and then I'm going to use the magic wand tool just to get rid of the white behind the head. So I'm just going to click um, in that area and then just press delete on the keyboard so that we've got a transparent background. Okay, next we just want to trim it down, so I'm going to go to Image and Trim, uh, select Transparent Pixels, click on OK, and then we want to save it as a PNG. So there's a little white piece here that I also want to get rid of, so I'm just going to click on the magic wand again, click on that white section, just delete that as well, that's looking good. And then I'm going to go to File, Export, Quick Export as PNG. Alright, I'm going to call this just Head, and then press Enter, and that will save a PNG file. Okay, so now we're going to step back, so I'm going to go to uh, step backward, step backward, I'm just going to use the shortcut Alt Command Z, just to step back until we see the other parts. You can obviously cut them to separate layers as well, but I usually just do it this way, um, yeah, it doesn't take that long. So I'm going to select the body next, like that, and I'm going to go to Image Crop, and uh, then I'm going to click on the magic wand, just click on the white, just delete that. And then I'm going to go to Image and Trim, click on OK. Then we want to save this one, so I'm going to go to File, Export, Quick Export as PNG, and I'm going to call this one Body. Okay, and I'm just going to step back again. So I'm going to quickly fast forward through the rest of this. Okay, so because the two legs are very similar, or they're actually identical, I'm just going to duplicate that file. So I'm going to go to my Finder, and I'm going to get that uh, leg that I saved, the right leg, and I'm just going to duplicate that, so right click, duplicate, and I'm going to call this left leg. So because they're identical, we can just duplicate them to save some time. Alright, so now we're going to jump into Maya, and I'm using Maya 2017, but you should be able to follow along in previous versions. So I'm going to go to my front view, so I'm just pressing space, and then going to the front view, pressing space again and then I'm going to set my renderer to viewport version 2. I think this is something new in Maya 2016 and 2017. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier to view your textures in the viewport. So if you don't have that, don't worry, you can still follow along. So first of all, we need to create an image plane. So I'm going to go to create and then free image plane. And then with your image plane selected, you're on the right hand side under the attribute editor. You're going to click on the yellow folder. And then we're going to load our first file. So let me just browse to that folder quickly. And uh, first of all, I'm going to load the head. And I'm just going to open that. And this will basically just bring in the image that we're going to use to trace our geometry around or our curves. Okay, so we're going to use curves. And I'm going to go to curves and surfaces. And then I'm going to use the Bezier tool. And we're going to trace around our object very roughly, just something like that. I'm going to show you guys a little trick that I found um, that you don't really have to go on the actual edge. Uh, one thing that you need to note here is try and go clockwise when you do this. If you go anti-clockwise, then the normals of this um, surface might actually show in the incorrect direction. So just try and go clockwise and um, everything should be good. So once you get there, just press enter and then we need to close our curves. So I'm going to hold in shift on the keyboard, right click on the curves and then click on open close curves. And that's just going to close it for us. All right, then with this uh, curve selected, I'm going to go to surfaces and then click on planar. And that's just going to create a nice planar surface for us. Cool, so I'm going to bring up the outliner here on the side so we can just get some information and just access our items a little bit easier. So I'm going to delete the Bezier one. So just select that and click delete. And um, then we can rename our planar to head. So I'm just going to rename that. Right, so the next step is to hide our image plane. So just click on that and press H on the keyboard. And then we're going to bring in the material for our head. So I'm going to open the hypershade 
and uh, because I'm using 2017 I'm actually going to use the Arnold renderer so under Arnold under shader under surface I'm going to create an AI standard material and uh, let's just give it a name so I'm going to call this head and then next to color I'm going to click on this little checker box and then I'm going to choose file all right and that's going to bring up this file editor for us so we can click on the little folder next to image name and then I'm going to choose head.png click on open and that's just going to load that texture and now what we can do is we can assign this material to the surface so I'm going to hold in middle mouse just drag it onto that and now I just want to enable textures in the viewport so I'm going to go to shading and then just enable hardware texturing all right so here you can see that our shape is not really matching our texture obviously you can see the white in between so I'm going to show you an easy way to fix that so first of all select your surface and then here on the side go to Arnold and then we're going to untick opaque so that's the first step and the second step we're going to go back into the hypershade all right let's just make this window a bit bigger something like that so basically what we want to do is we want to use the alpha channel of our hair.png to drive the opacity of our material so I'm going to take the alpha out of our PNG file and I'm going to put it into this little green dot here and it's going to bring up this other button here click on that and then scroll all the way down and you'll see opacity just expand that and then basically we need to connect it to R, G and B so I'm going to connect this one to R and then you can click on these little lines just click on it once twice and it will bring up the parameters that are in use so you can currently see that we're using color and also opacity and if you expand opacity you'll see the G and the B and then we can basically just connect the out alpha to the G and also out alpha to the B. So now we've got that coming in there and that's driving the opacity. So now if we go back to our viewport and I do a quick render, I'm just going to add a light to our scene, just a uh, default sky dome light. And then we're going to click on Arnold and render. And there you can see that's looking much better. All right, so I'm going to close that down and I'm just going to move this guy up a little bit. All right, so I'm going to hide the head. So I'm going to click on head, press H on the keyboard to hide. And then I'm going to unhide the image plane. And then we're going to load our next image. So just on the yellow folder again. And then I'm going to load the body. All right, click on open. And that's going to bring in our body. So let's just leave it there in the center. I'm going to zoom in. And then we're going to draw our curves around it. So I'm going to go to curves again and then Bezier tool. And then remember to go clockwise. So I'm just going to do something very roughly around this. Maybe like that. Press enter. Hold in shift. Right click. Open and close. And that will just close our curves for us. So highlight the curves. And then go to surfaces. And click on planar. Okay that's looking good. So we can hide our image plane again. So just select that in the outliner. Press H on the keyboard to hide it. And um, now we can also delete our Bezier for that. And I'm going to rename this planar surface to body. Okay, so now we're going to create the material for this one. So I'm going to go back into the hypershade. And I'm going to click this button just to clear this view area. And I'm going to go to shader and surface. Going to create a new AI standard material. I'm going to call this one body. Okay, and next to color, I'm going to click on the checker box. Go to file. And uh, then I'm going to click on the yellow file on the side and we're going to load our body.png. Same procedure again. And um, now I'm going to connect this out alpha again. So I'm going to just drag that into this green dot. Then click on other. Scroll all the way down to opacity. Uh, there we go. Just expand that. Select opacity R. And then click these lines to just show me the opacity again. Expand it. And then I'm going to connect these two to G and this one to B. All right, so that's good. I'm going to assign that to our um, surface. So I'm going to hold in middle mouse, body, just drag it onto there, close that, and then click on this surface, go to Arnold and just untick this opaque. Okay, let's do a quick render. Okay, there we go. We've got our body. Cool, so I'm going to quickly run through the others. I'm just going to fast forward through this. Okay, so done with that. And uh, because our legs are identical, we can actually just duplicate this one. So I'm going to select this uh, surface, go to edit, and then go to duplicate. And um, that will basically just duplicate that one, create a new one, and we can just rename this one to right leg. 
Alright, so this one comes this side. Something like that. Alright, so now we can unhide all these others. So I'm going to select them all in the outliner, press H to unhide them. And then I'm just going to move them around. So we've got our, uh, that's the leg, and we've got this leg. And then we've got the body. We'll just move that there for now. Let's unhide the head as well. All right, something like that. And um, now we're going to set our pivot points for all of these objects. So first of all, I'm going to click on the head. And then on the keyboard, just press D. And then you can actually move your pivot point. So I'm going to set this pivot point here at the bottom. Uh, just press D again to go back into normal selection mode. I'm going to press uh, E to rotate. So now you can see that we're actually rotating around that pivot point. Cool, so I'm going to press W. I'm just going to move it into place somewhere around there. And then I'm going to do the same with the arms. So I'm going to click on this arm, press D on the keyboard, and then I'm just going to move the pivot to the area where we want to pivot around. I'm going to click on this arm. I'm just going to move that into position as well because we want to rotate it around that area. And then the legs, I'm just going to move that up to there. And then this one up to there. So in this tutorial, I'm not going to go into using bones and skeletons. Um, that's a little bit more advanced and I might cover that in a future tutorial. Okay, so once we've set all the pivot points, I'm going to press D again to go out of that uh, pivot mode. And then I'm just going to move all these parts into position. Maybe this one we can rotate slightly. Maybe something like that. All right, now I'm going to press space and I'm going to go into perspective mode. Um, there's just a few things that I want to move into place. So in this view, I'm going to make sure that my shading is set to hardware texturing so we can see our little guy uh, just moving there. And um, now I can do things like, let's move this head a little bit forward so it's actually going in front of his body so we can see that part there. And the arms, I'm just going to select both of these arms and I'm going to move them behind the body. Just slightly behind like that and we're going to do the same with the legs so I'm just going to move them behind the body so you get something like that which looks pretty cool um, and now if we just do a quick test render you can see that our guy is looking pretty cool and um, now you can obviously go in and add a background plane if you want to so for this example I'm just going to use a normal uh, plane polygon and I'm just going to scale that up and then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and I'm going to move it backwards just so that we have some sort of a background like that okay if we do another test render okay there's a little guy looking cool so before we can start animating this guy we need to order these objects in the outliner so I'm going to make the body the main object and I'm going to place all the other objects below the body so I'm going to take left arm, right arm and the legs and also the head and I'm going to middle mouse drag onto the body and that's just going to add them below the body. So basically this means if I click on body and then you can basically move everything around without selecting everything. You can obviously rotate it all together like that um, and then you can also go into the separate objects below that like the left arm and then you can rotate that on its own. And you can go into the right arm, you can rotate that on its own, same with the legs, same with the head. Alright, so um, basically to create a very basic animation now, we're going to go into the object that we want to animate. So let's say we want to animate the head, you can go to head and um, click on head here. And I'm going to add a keyframe to rotate, so I'm going to click on rotate and just set key. Make sure that your auto key is enabled here at the bottom. And I'm going to go forward to frame 20 and I'm just going to add a little bit of rotation. Go to 30, a little bit of rotation that way and maybe 60. Just add some random keyframes here all the way up to 120. Maybe set that back to zero. So now if we scrub through this, you can see there we've got that little bit of animation. And I'm going to do the same with the arm. So I'm just going to select this arm and I'm also going to go to the first frame. Right click on rotation, set a key. And I'm just going to add some basic rotation to this arm. Something like that. Really simple stuff, but you can do some, some really cool animations uh, using this technique. Uh, and the leg, same thing again. Right click, rotate, set key. And I'm just going to add a little bit of movement there. Maybe no idea what this guy is doing. 
something like that okay so now if we scrub through here we can see we have that little animation and now if you want to actually move the whole guy as a whole so i'm going to go to the first frame go to body and then i'm going to set a key on the translate so i'm going to right click on translate set key and i'm going to move forward and press w to move now i can basically just move him around move him this way move him back there so if we play back you'll see that he is moving on his own and all the parts are moving independently and that's how easy it is to create 2D animations or cartoons in Maya. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Give me a thumbs up if you did. And remember, I bring out new tutorials once a week. So if you want to be notified, click on that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Cheers, bye.